worship you in this place. Oh, we lift up holy hands to you this morning, Lord God. Referencing your presence that's in us and in this place, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your wisdom, your understanding, your counsel, your might. That you should shower upon us today doing life development, Lord God. Thank you for strengthening us how to fight, how to war. And not only that, but to wage a good warfare, Father God, that we know how strategically how to win every battle that you allow us to go in and fight, Lord God. So we thank you for strength. We thank you for strategy. We thank you for sound doctrine, Lord God. Thank you for uncovering the hidden things, God, that the enemy does not want us to know concerning the demonic realm. How you've given us power to utterly destroy every giant, every spirit, no matter how mighty it is, how big it is, that you've given us the authority to utterly destroy it and cast it out and wipe it out of our land, Lord God, forever. So we thank you for the power that is on the inside of us, God, because it's your power, it is your grace, it is your glory, it is your anointing, Father, that's on the inside of us, Father. And you've given us power of authority through the Holy Spirit that we are sealed with, Lord God, that we can run against truth, God, leap over walls, God, use the sword of the Spirit to cut out the head of giants, Lord God. You cause us to trample over scorpions, God, and they cannot hurt us, God. So we walk in our power. We lift up our heads, God. We wave our mantle, Lord God, declaring that we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors, God, through Christ Jesus. And because you are on the inside of us, and you've given us right to rule and have dominion on this earth, Lord God, we win every single time, Father. So we thank you for what you want to teach us today as we go farther into the seven nations that you have left in our land for us to destroy. So we thank you for wisdom. Thank you for revelation that's going to cause deliverance to come forth in our life. Thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to learn today how to eradicate the Jebusite giant, the Jebusite spirit. Amen. And we want to wave to Ghana this morning. Hi, Ghana. We have Ghana, a ministry in Ghana that has been tuning in. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're trying to invite us to come to Ghana, but we're going to see about it. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's just amazing how the teaching that we are doing here at Driven Ministries is now going towards the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. And they're actually tuning in to our services and coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eradicating the Jebusite giant. Yes. This is a strong spirit. This is a militant spirit. And it's one of the it's the strongest one of all of them. Amen. Amen. And we want to learn why this, this, this particular giant is the strongest of all of them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I gave you a worksheet. You're going to go by the worksheet this morning because we strategically want to give you a layout of what these spirits do so you can go back home and you can study yourself and begin to dissect yourself. Amen? Because we're not teaching deliverance and spiritual warfare if we're not first being our first partaker of it and seeing if that spirit is on the inside of what? Me! Yeah. 
deal with it. Amen. And then utterly uh, uh, destroy it, right? Yes. Then in time, we get to the point now where we're tired of seeing that I have a spirit that has been dominating me and that has been having its hooks in my nose and leading me around for all my life. No. I come to a place of maturity where I'm going to let God be God and I'm going to use the power that's on the inside of me. Amen. The God that's on the inside of me to uproot these spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what that's why God left these spirits in our land. Because he wants us to deal with them. Amen? Amen. And we're learning that these are giants that have been there and they've been strong and mightier because we have not been able to recognize them, call them out, mm -hmm. to name them, mm -hmm. to identify them. Mm -hmm. And we're teaching that we're not just going to continue to go through scripture and just surpass names, right? Amen. When they know God pinned them there for a reason. Amen. Amen. So we're uncovering those hidden things uh, that the enemy wants to keep darkened. We're exposing them and bringing them to light. Amen. 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 Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 1. That's where it talks about those nations. Come on, y'all. Give uh, Elder Alexa a hand for the past couple weeks. Yeah. She was teaching on the Fasting, praying, doing the thing. 
comes in, when you don't think you're going to come to that big thing that's on the other side. Because it's never presented itself to you. That big thing is presented itself to you. That's right. Do you want me? Come on. Can you take me? Come on. Can you conquer me? Come on. Yes. Oh, I'm going to block you from this. You can't have this. You don't have enough. You're not worthy enough. You can't have this. You ain't never lived like this. What makes you think you can live like this now? Dream, dream what? Jesus. That's those giants that are greater than mighty in you that you got to say, oh, hell no. Come hell or high water. That's what the boys that went over to the sea and the head of the storm came up. That was high water. Completeness. 
you have. Yes, Lord. So that's why he lets them giants hang in your land. Because you got to see what you have, what you are about, what you are capable of accomplishing for yourself as well as the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You got to begin to see you. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Lord. And let's stop having that form of God in this house and keep talking about Amen. it. And let that power Amen. really, really, really resound in our lives. Yes. Amen. You know, yes. you know when demons see you come up on the scene. Not today. Because she's come on the scene. That's right. Amen. Yes. God has come on the scene. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We have the power to turn any and every situation around in our Amen. lives. Amen. So stop looking at everything as giants. Amen. Get that attitude that David had. Yes. Hold up. Yes. You unclean, circumcised yes. giant coming against me. Amen. A child of God, yes. a joint heir to the throne. Yes. You got the nerve to step up against me? Because yes. you know who I am. I'm the most high God. Yes. Amen. And you got the nerve to come challenge me? Yes. Come on, win. Because you're not going to win. Come bring your best shot. Because you're not going to win. That's the attitude we can we got to take in life. We have to take this type of attitude in life yes. towards giants that are facing me. Yes. You, yes. Yes. You, yes. You're showing yourself up because you're kind of trying to block me, keep yes. it because I'm right there. Come on, man. Amen. I'm right there at my next level, yes. my next promotion, yes. my next step upgrade. Come on now. So you're just trying to block me to keep me from seeing. Come on. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. They would do the five stones and only took it one shot. When you stand on your word and stand on who you are and who's on the inside of you and who power is on the inside of you, man, you don't think but one shot. That's it. One shot. That's it. One shot. I was laughing with Alexa this week concerning the enemy. Have you guys ever looked at the Bible and know when the enemy comes, he comes in legions? Yeah. And then the Bible tells us when one when they flee come one way, they go flee in seven ways. And when one leaves, he's gonna come back and he's gonna bring back more with him. But don't you notice that when God comes on the scene, he didn't need no help. He didn't need no entourage. Jesus didn't need no help. He was it was just one, one of them. So that let you know that the enemy is a punk. He's a coward. Yes, he is. He's just like them, um, them uh, coyotes and werewolves in the um, Lion King. Oh, yeah. The hyenas. The hyenas. That's what I want. The Lion King. Yes. They got to come in, in in groups. And that's why they call it grouping spirits. They got to come in groups. They can't come on one-on-one. -on -one. That's right. The kingdom of God come by himself. Depressed. Depressed. But it takes one you to rise up and say, oh no. 
depression, you bow. Discouragement, you bow. Huh? You bow. You bow. You bow. I'm not bowing anymore. You bow. Amen. That's right. Amen. Bow down. And the Lord has been to me lately, too, saying, This is my house. This is my house. You got to go. You got to go. This is my house. Amen. Amen. Isn't that what you do in the natural? Amen. That's what I come up in your house. Oh, you will fight for your house. Yes, ma'am. You will fight for yourself. Yes, this is my house. This is my house. The nerve of you to come and trespass and violate in my house. Yes. That's right. The audacity to think you could overtake. You think, you think I'm vulnerable? You yes. think I'm weak? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on in my house. Teach come on, come on in my house. I'm not know what I can do when you come in my house. Amen. Yes, yes, See, right. I can't do that. Just like you. Right. See, so that's why I say in parallel. Mm -hmm. You're not. 
not real careful and not use your discerning of spirit, you would think it's God when it's the enemy. Right. You would think it's the enemy when it's God. Right. That's why you have to use discernment and try the spirit by the spirit to see which one is operating. Because it could be the very spirit of God that is operating in this particular situation. Amen? Amen. So they work parallel. They work together. But the enemy always wants to try to be just like God, do things just like God. He just tries to. But there is a big difference. God is for your what? Prosperity. God, so that the believer might be instructed and grow. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to, everything about him, he wants us to prosper. Even if it's in the middle of warfare, he still wants us to prosper. Okay? Even if he sent the correction, even if he sent um, the rebuke, even if he sent the spirit, the demonic spirit, it's still for our prosperity. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he sent it, it's always for our benefit. Amen. All right? For our training and our growth. Yes. But he didn't say it's for us to instruct and grow. But Satan is for our what? Destruction and to discredit the believer and therefore God himself. That's why the enemy send these particular nights into our life because it wants us to discredit God. Y'all yes, remember what Joe White said? Mm -hmm. That's a big genocide spirit right there. Yeah. Man, you can stop fighting this right. Children going on land, going all our happy, going all our wealth, going. You know, I'm tired of this warfare. I'm tired of always losing. I'm tired. I mean, I, I have nothing. That was the empty spirit also on the yes. scene. You know what, Joe? Let's make this one's tough about it. Didn't you see that genocide spirit? A very militant spirit? Yes. Man, it will be on your tail. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, just on you, on you, on you. Yes. To get rid of you, to yes. destroy you. Come on, man. To yes. just wipe you out. Why? Are you behind me this hard? Why are you want me this hard? Why are you behind me this hard? Why are you want me this hard? Because man, once I get the revelation of who I am, yes. you go, you in trouble. Yes. yes. And the kingdom of, of, of God is going to do what? Advance. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Amen. So it wants to discredit God. It wants to let you know that God ain't for you. God ain't hear your prayer. That's right. I mean, God done left you a long time ago because you was disobedient. Everything he told you to do, you didn't do. So I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know what you're asking him to refuse you and you refresh you for. I don't know why you're asking him to anoint you again for. There's no hope in you. What you told you want to start over? Come on. Ain't no start over. You done started over seven times. Oh, so many times now. He ain't going to anoint you again. No. Church inside the spirit. Speak, Next paragraph. These seven nations in Deuteronomy 7 and 1 parallel what the seven characteristics of God found in Isaiah 11 and 2. Somebody get that for us. Isaiah 11 and 2. That we're talking about the sevens again. The seven things that God wants this is what he's requiring of us to be who we are in this kingdom, in this earth realm. We have to begin to manifest the seven characteristics of God. And that's what these seven giants were. They were totally opposite of what God wanted for us. Totally opposite. That's why I said you got to destroy them and you got to erect these. Amen. There's seven of them. When was somebody got it for me? Isaiah 7 and all. 11 and 2. Read it for me. The Spirit of the Lord. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Spirit of understanding. Mm -hmm. Spirit of courage. Uh, counsel. Counsel. Spirit of might. Spirit of knowledge. Spirit of fear. Of the Lord. That's what he wants us to have. Those are seven characteristics straight, of straight, um, traits of God. Amen? Amen? It's the spirit of him on the inside of us. We're supposed to possess the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of 
knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Seven characteristics of God. Read in your scripture, Elder Linda. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the, of the fear of the Lord. See, that's why he said, get those seven nations off your land. That's mm -hmm. right. Because these spirits got to rest here. Amen. 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 The spirit of the Lord got to rest here. Amen. Get them demons off your land. When you say earlier, Elder Linda, this is the Lord's house. This is the Lord's name. Amen. Amen. This is the Lord's name. So when I come up on the scene, who am I bringing? The Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And who else am I bringing on the scene? Spirit of wisdom. Amen. Who else am I bringing on the scene? Spirit of what? Understanding. Who else? Spirit of who else? Spirit of who else? Spirit of who else? Spirit of who else? Because God has showed up. And I'm coming with all this power. Glory, grace, and anointing. Uh -huh. 
a lying tongue, uh -huh. hands that shed innocent blood, mm -hmm. a heart that deceives wicked plans, mm -hmm. feet that are swift and run into evil, mm -hmm. a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among a brother. Lord, have mercy. That, that, that one, that, that, that one that sows discord among the brother. Jesus. Ooh, that's an abomination. Yes, it is. To him. When we yes. come in here, that's like God coming against God. Yes. Mm -hmm. You God, I'm God, and we fighting against one another. Ah, oh, that God ain't king for that. Amen. Nah. He's not king for that. But look at that chart I gave you at the beginning. Now let's parallel these things. It said what? A proud eye. What, what uh, speak evil spirit that is? Yeah. The Amorite. And the sin in our life, it produces what? Proud and disdain of others. Yes. Mm. Looking down of others. Mm. Hating others. Yeah. And the next one is what? A tongue of deception. And that was that what spirit? Canonized. And what sin does it manifest? Mm. So, so community that destroys the truth. It distorts the truth every single time. Mm -hmm. Every single time. That people please his spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the truth of the matter. You know what you should and should not do. But you do just the opposite. You go to the opposite of truth just to please that particular person. Mm -hmm. Or to do that particular thing. You know God wants you to do this. But you want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what you please in the enemy. Mm -hmm. You're coming against truth. In other words, you are a liar. Right. And you are a habitual liar. Yes, and now, God is rising up in you and telling you, okay, you need to stop lying. You need to stop telling the truth. And you just told a lie. And Holy Ghost comes to you and tells you, tell you this lie. Yeah. But your soul wants to come against the truth. No, 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 I ain't lying. You always expose myself like that. I'm just going to live with the lie. Right. But the Holy Ghost on the inside, you tell me, tell me this lie. Eradicate this lying spirit once and for all. Right. Amen. I'm working on you so you stop lying so much. Yes. Yes. The next one is what? Hands that shed what? Innocent blood. And that's what spirit? Genocide. And the sin manifestation is what? Allegiance and without opposition, without value to the others. And the next one is a heart that what divine is plan of iniquity, yes. what spirit it, it, it manifests, right. 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 and what does it do? Schemes to extract blessings from, from others. others. Wow. And the next one is what seek that hates to run to affliction, that's that curvicide spirit. And what sin it manifests? Living without considering God's purpose. And the next one is a witness of deception that breathes out on truth, that's a hit type, and the spirit it manifests is what allowing yourself to be a channel of the seventh currents. And the last one, the seventh was he who starts contentious among his brother is the parasite. And what is it? Oversimplified judgments. Amen. So now we see how all these seven nations, seven things God hates, seven characteristics of God. So we got to have these things lined up with the seven characteristics of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And everything else we name are earthly, fleshly, carnal, demonic, hindrances, setbacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you give me a more example of oversimplifying judgments? Oh, what are we talking about on that? What are we talking about on that parasite? What are we talking about on that parasite? That parasite spirit. We called it also a parasite too, didn't we? Yeah, a spirit that attaches itself to you. Come on, talk to me. with you for some time, for some years. And a spirit that manipulates as well, mm -hmm. that plays in there. It will make you think that the co correction yes. or whatever God is trying to bring you, you just make it like this, there's none of that. Okay. It's just like Amen. Okay. Eve in the garden, we're going to talk about Eve. What did, what did Satan say to her? Oh, you mean you really ain't going to die. Right. Is that really what he said? Mm -hmm. You oversimplified. You're making it seem simple. Oh, he ain't mean that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. Right. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? It started 
point of contention yeah. to this very, very day right. against one another. Right. To the point that Adam and Eve, Adam said, what are you coming back me for? Right. It was that woman you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> that was contention. Yeah. Yeah. Eve said, she was the snake. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let's move on. Now let's get into this Jebusite. The Jebusites are believed to be the descendants of Jebus, a descendant of Canaan, which is Ham's son. They were thought to be a warlike people and were mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as nations living in the mountains. They thought they were bigger, thought they were better, thought they were above. They are the one tribes mentioned in the Bible that God promises promised to expel from the promised land. One of the seven nations that God commanded the Israelites to destroy completely. And it's in whole entire lesson that we were talking about utterly, completely, completely, y'all, completely. Finalize this thing. I'm done with this. I'm done with me continuing to go around and say, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. The Jebusites settled and they constructed Jerusalem. The Jebusites, they built Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about this Jebusite. It means what? A threshing. Let's go to 2 Samuel 24. It's a threshing spirit. A threshing spirit. If we ever get it back to the meeting, y'all go ahead and read it. 2 Samuel 24 and 16. It's a thresher. It's a thresher. And then the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it. The Lord repented him of the evil mm -hmm. and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Mm -hmm. Stay now by thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of, of what do you say that? Urona. Urona. The Jebusite. So I wanted to give you the foundation of where this Jebusite spirit and why it is called the thresher. Okay. The thresher. This is when David numbered the people, God took, he, he just did what he wanted to do, and God brought judgment on them. Right. But then God said, hold up, just bro, stop killing the people, angels. Stop, stop killing them. You know, have mercy on them. But the angels stopped at the place of Jebusite, the, state, the threshing place of Urara. Now let's go to 18 through 20, uh, 25. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arona the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arona looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arona went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Urara said, Wherefore is the Lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be saved from the people. And Urara said unto David, Let my Lord the king take an offering up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen, burnt sacrifices, threshing instruments, and the instruments for the, for the wood, uh, of the oxen for wood. All these things that Aurora as a king gave unto the king. Father, you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Aurora said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Aurora, Nah, but I will surely buy it of thee at, at, at a price. Mm -hmm. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of that which do cost me nothing. Mm -hmm. So God brought. David brought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver, and David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague stayed on Israel. In other words, there is a price you're going to have to pay when it comes against these demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't taking nothing from you. This thing, you got a right to come back. Yeah. Right. Mm, I'm, not taking, I'm not taking no little enticement. No, 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 I'm coming for you. Right. I'm coming to buy the threshing floor. Mm. I'm coming to take it and I'm coming to offer it to the Lord. Right. So this demon that has been on this particular land that has, has, has been at this place, this entry gate into your life, you got to now once for what? No, I'm buying you. I'm taking you. Mm. And I'm offering you to, to God. I'm giving 
giving you to God. We're done with this right here. But what does pressure mean? Pressure refers to agricultural activity of being grain out of cups, which was done to the animals such as the oxen. We talked about this in the oxen anointing in prophetic class. Which were used to tread on grain that was laid out on the threshing floor. Okay. Now let's talk about the character's traits how God deals with those that have the spirit rooted in them. Mm -hmm. Jebusites are very close relatives to the Gerbicite. We will talk about it. Mm -hmm. Jebusites are more militant in their behavior. They are natural minded. Mm -hmm. Unable to recognize true things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Jebusite which translate is trodden down or polluted are also to be driven out and to be destroyed. Trotting down. Trotting down. In other words, it want to keep you low. want to keep you humiliated. want to keep threshing you. I mean just beating you, threshing you, grinding you. And it does it militantly, aggressively. The Jebusites are spirits that tread and do what? Stomp on other people. By stopping old people, Jebusites make concerted effort to prevent them from doing what? Growing taller. Are you listening to me? The Jebusites are spirits that they stomp on other people. They want to keep people from growing taller and higher. We're going to give you some examples later. They want to keep you going higher. They want to keep you from being great. That's in the spirit realm as well as the natural realm. I also was giving Alexa an analogy about the eagle and the serpent. Mm -hmm. When the eagle fights the serpent, he doesn't fight him on the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he'll wrap around every person and, and, and constrict him. That's right. No, what that eagle does is fight him in the air. Yeah, that's right. And that's where our warfare is yeah. in the air. Mm -hmm. You want to destroy your enemy? You got to fight him in the air. That's right. Why? We don't war against flesh and blood. We don't war in the natural realm. We war in the war against principalities, power, power, spiritual weaknesses, and what high places. That's where our warfare is. Our warfare is not common. I don't fight against. We don't fight against one another. We fight against that spirit. And where is it? In the air. So an eagle exemplifying a God nature being. That's how we have to fight. Right. In the air. I can't fight you on your turf, on your territory. Because most likely you will win. Right. So I gotta beat you in my turf. Right. God said he's gonna be eagles that soar. I'm out of best wings. I go higher than you. So I'm gonna fight you up there. Amen. I'm gonna fight you on my turf. Right. Because I'm rooted in what heavenly places. Right? right? Amen. So that means I win in the heavenly realm. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Come against me. Try to try me, but I'm gonna because I look common to you if I'm fighting you in the flesh. Yes. I look just like you if I'm fighting you in the flesh. Yes. But when I'm fighting you up here, yes. you can't win. Yes. And to me, and to your eyes, I look the same. No, they're not moving. Yes. I had a sister tell me, every time you get through a situation, you don't even move the body. Because no. mm -hmm. I know where my warfare is. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to ruin my character, my Amen. reputation. Of being the person that I am That's right. by coming out of character yeah. to demean myself for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you will look the fool at the end of the day. Amen. And you will come to me by. Amen. Then if the Bible said, I'll make the enemy your footstool, yeah. yeah. oh, you will come to me. Amen. You will come upon to me. Because I'm never coming to your level. Because I fight here. I heard coming to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, then the eagle could take that snake up so high. And that snake will explode because it can't handle it. Wow. Yeah, that's right. right. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. yeah. So why don't we fight the stuff in the natural realm? That's right. Why, why, why? Amen. But we're getting nowhere. Yes. But when we fight in the spirit realm, yes. stuff explodes. Yeah. Stuff is utterly destroyed. That's right. Yeah, I gotta take I'm doing it in prayer. Confession of my faith. Amen. That's why that's how I deal with you. Amen. 
Amen. They like to make people feel small, yes. and they deliberately put them down any time they see these small people trying to establish their authority. Next week, we will give some, some descriptions of who these people are. Because I want you to be able to relate to your life. If you are the Jebusite, or if a Jebusite is coming towards you. But my ultimate goal here is for you to recognize that the Jebusite is in you. Right? Are you the person that's always trotting down people? Don't want people to rise up. Don't want people to get high. Don't want people to outdo you. That's just a little snippet. Amen? Amen. We're going to stop right here. So I want to give you a little introduction of what this Jebusite spirit is. It's a trodden down spirit. It's a very militant spirit. And it hates your authority. It hates, it comes after your authority real bad. It wants your authority. And if you look at the warfare in your life, it has always been trying to come against who you are. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a prophet, it comes against your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It come, wants to come against your authority. Yeah. And this started from Genesis all the way to Revelation that this Jebusite spirit would just come against people's authority. And that's all it wants. Your authority. And who you are. The dear friend. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're done for this lesson. Let's get ready to transition.